Hi, and welcome to the Virtual Feast. My name is Julia Bernardini. I'm an art historian and an instructor of humanities and the founder of Wonder Feast, a boutique travel company through which I take small groups of inquisitive art, culture, and food lovers to European cities for unforgettable on-site in-depth seminars. Today we're going to discuss what's so Spanish about the Spanish steps. How did Rome's famed Spanish steps get their name? After all, they're in Italy and there doesn't seem to be anything particularly Spanish about them. The name comes from the square where they're located, the Piazza di Spagna or Spain Square. It gets its name from a building that always has a prominently displayed Spanish flag over its grand entrance. It's the Spanish Embassy to the Holy See or Vatican and has been housed here since the mid 1600s. The irony is that the iconic stairway was actually paid for by a Frenchman. In 1660, a French diplomat to Rome from the court of Louis XIV left money in his will for a stairway to be built that would provide a worthy and elegant means to reach the French community's church of La Trinité des Monts, the Trinity of the Mountains. At the time, the church built in the late 1500s was at the top of a steep and unpaved section of the Pynchon Hill, as we can see in this engraving here. The project for the staircase, however, languished for a while, thanks to squabbles over it and other matters between the ruler of Rome at the time, Pope Alexander VII and King Louis XIV. Louis thought a large equestrian statue of himself on the central landing of the staircase would look smashing. Alex didn't. But building finally began in 1723, 200 years after the stairway was first conceived. The architect Francesco de Sanctis, in collaboration with Alessandro Specchi, created an elegant sweeping structure that cascades down the hill in three alternately narrow and wide sections, punctuated by two terraces, one with a convex and the other with concave wall. The overall effect is graceful and dynamic and much more than just a means of getting from one place to another. Surely that 17th century diplomat would have been pleased with the outcome. By the way, just to add to the geographical confusion of this area, in the 18th and 19th century, it was known to Romans as Il Ghetto degli Inglesi, the ghetto of the Englishmen. And it was named this because of the British and European aristocrats and authors and artists who would stay in this neighborhood when they came to Rome on their requisite grand tour. People like this English nobleman, elegantly posed with St. Peter's Basilica and Castel Sant'Angelo in the background, or this gaggle of Danish authors and artists shown cozily mingling in a Roman eatery with the locals. Case in point, on the right-hand side of the steps is the house where Romantic-era poet John Keats lived. It's now a wonderful museum. On the left-hand side, we see Babington's Tea Room, founded in the late 1800s by two British ladies to cater to any fellow subjects presumably not fond of espresso. So Spanish, French, English, whatever you choose to refer to it as, still today this neighborhood is replete with chic hotels, restaurants, and boutiques popular among foreign visitors and locals alike. And the steps remain its main draw. I hope you've enjoyed this little taste of Rome. If you have, why not join me in May 2021 for Patrons, Artists, and Private Palazzi, a one-week on-site seminar in Rome. To find out more, click on the link. Take care.